Right, so let's rewind a little bit. Uh, when we started developing DuckDB Iceberg, we took a look at some of these uh, engines and tried to say like, okay, what are they supporting? What is the experience like? Uh, how can, you know, how does that be fit in this ecosystem and what could potentially differentiate us? And also on this slide, tons of logos, all these previous talks, Iceberg has won, everybody's moving to Iceberg, you know, Iceberg is the next big thing. And at least from my point of view, and I will just do this personally, just because everybody's adopting it doesn't always mean the experience of like integrating with Iceberg is that great. Uh, just to the point where, and this is, I have seen this before, you have issues on the Lake Keeper Discord, Lake Keeper Discord about, I'm having trouble importing a Parquet file into an Iceberg table. That can happen. I have had trouble that trouble as well. Um, but with such a big, you know, all of this adoption, it should be easier than this, right? Uh, but let's just go through a little thought exercise of like, okay, what are these pain points? What is happening when people are trying to just get started with Iceberg? So if we go through the thought exercise of I am a first year university student. I'm studying computer science, engineering, whatever. I'm hearing all about Iceberg at meetups. You know, I want to try it. I want to see what the fuss is all about. Spark seems to be, you know, also very popular in this space. Let me sit down on my computer for an afternoon and figure out how to get started. So suppose we have a REST catalog set up and we know our REST catalog URI and some authentication token. Like what steps would this new student have to go through to get just a CSV file into an iceberg table? And feel free to yell it out, and I'll repeat it to the uh, to the online listeners. Come on, guys! Like we're <laughs> install Java. Install Java, yes. <laughs> deploy an engine. Uh, yes, deploy an engine. So depending, probably download the Spark runtime. Uh, install PySpark, the correct version of PySpark. Set up a Python virtual environment. Yeah, it's, uh, it comes with a REST catalog, so let's say that. <laughs> well, you could, you could do a shortcut with Docker You could do a shortcut with a Docker image, that's right. But if you're getting started with a Spark, you still have to do the install Java, and then you need the Python environment, install PySpark. Uh, so I got a couple of steps down here, and it's also like when you download the um, the iceberg runtime image, you have to make sure it's also according to your Java version and also according to the Spark version and then also according to the iceberg version, which is not related to the table versions. There's a lot of moving parts here. And for somebody who is just getting started, it's kind of confusing. Uh, yeah, this is what it looks like in the end. Uh, and then you, suppose you get it all good and it's all working. And then you run a create table statement, and then this is your error message. And you're a first year student, and it's your second week, and you're trying to figure stuff out, and you have no idea what to do with this. Uh, it's all just a little bit daunting. Uh, I also highlighted this as a very fun little Easter egg in the Java, Java error, helpful, helpful unknown host exception interceptor. <laughs> Uh, if you want to know how I made this error, you can come find me during the networking. I can explain it to you. <laughs> um, okay, so that is an experience I had before starting to develop DuckDB Iceberg. And I was like, okay, I would like to not do that with DuckDB Iceberg, right? So one of the principles of DuckDB Iceberg is, you know, it's portable, platform agnostic, no dependencies. So we can keep that in mind as we do the exercise again, but with DuckDB. So shout it out if you know it. Install DuckDB. There we go. We're getting somewhere. Install and run DuckDB. You can attach a catalog and you can start inserting data using a select star from and point it directly to a CSV file. And this is what it looks like in the end. Curl, so you just install it directly from our website. Attach your warehouse name, client ID, client secret, endpoint. You don't even need to create the schema if the schema is already there. And boom, create table as a select start from my CSV file. And if you do get an error, 
it's a bit more human readable. It makes a bit more sense. You're like, oh no, it can't get to this local host. And it's like a path thing that it's the same, uh, same situation I set up with the Spark thing. So if you really are curious, come find me after the talk. Uh, I do have a quick demo. Oh my God, wow, I raced through that. Uh, let's see if I can bring that up. Yes. Should I just maximize that? Will that stay presented? It does. Okay, so this is a version of a file I'm going to read into DuckDB, but it doesn't have the client ID and the client secret. Where is, uh, okay. That's hard to do with. Uh, so this is the current, I'm just on a development build, but as you will see later on in this presentation, we are planning a new release. So this is very close to what you guys can all see. Uh, yeah, hopefully at the end of the week. Don't read Snowflake credentials one statement, and that should just autocomplete. It does not. Can everybody still hear me? One statement. There we go, and it's there, and then I just do something like show all tables, and then it starts interacting with the REST catalog, which is a Snowflake REST catalog, which I have set up for this, uh, and eventually it will show all the tables. This is still something that can take a while because of how the REST catalog works. When we execute show all tables, we want to get all of the metadata for every table, so we have to loop around and do it for every table. This can still be asynchronous. This can be sped up much more. But the point still remains that, boom, I can now list all my tables. I can, this is, uh, I just inserted, inserted uh, TPCH scale factor one in here so I could run basically the whole TPCH benchmark suite if I wanted to. Uh, and yeah, I can also just insert data again with the select star from a CSV file. Another fun demo I can show you guys is if anybody is familiar with the Wasm client, which I think I have somewhere, we uh, have been making, a, putting a ton of work into that as well, and that should work. These are read-only credentials for the people who are trying to snipe <laughs> credentials. Uh, one issue that we've been having, so I can, I will say this may fail just because of like caching in Chrome. <laughs> so I was testing it before, but sometimes like I think if it's after an hour. You create the Polaris secret, and then, yeah, it just it uses the same secret, and then it's like, oh no, you have the wrong secret. So I'm doing it in a, there we go, success true. Boom! This is even easier. You don't even have to install DuckDB anymore. If you have your REST catalog set up, if you're, this is not the same scenario anymore, but if you're working at a company and it's like, oh, um, we, this is all of our data. It's at this warehouse URI here, your credentials. You don't have to install anything anymore. You just go to Chrome. And this is also great, or you go to your favorite browser of choice. <laughs> uh, this is also great if you want to do like analytics at the edge or just any super lightweight stuff. You don't have to download it anymore. Uh, you don't have to go through a complex setup process. Great. Back to the presentation. Demo v1.4. All right. So. We are planning v1.4 to release on Wednesday for people that are interested. Uh, as far as I have seen today, that is still the plan, but things change. Um, what is, so some of the features that we have for v1.4.0 is read and insert into v2 tables. Um, we're just being, we're just being a little bit cautious with inserts into v3 tables and updates and deletes because as Christian mentioned, Sometimes new engines aren't paying attention to all the details in the spec, and you can break iceberg tables. So, for instance, just last week, I realized we can insert into uh, columns that are marked not null. We can insert null values. And so that's something that I fixed. Don't worry. Uh, I have everything. Yeah, that's, uh, we won't be breaking your V2 tables. Uh, we can read V3 tables. That's a pretty easy one not to break. Um, connect to IRC catalogs based, backed by S3, Google Cloud Services, or R2. Uh, and you also just saw the Wasm support. Um, Iceberg is still being developed. 
So it does take time to develop an engine <laughs> to read everything and write everything. That being said, for everything beyond 4++, like we're really committed to implementing the whole Iceberg spec. Um, yeah, so updates and deletes for V2 tables are coming soon. I have a PR up for positional deletes. Uh, I put that on pause for the release. So hopefully V1.4.1, that gets in, along with updates, which should come right after. Insert delete update for V3 tables. Of course, merging all of your positional deletes and putting it into a deletion vector. That takes time to verify and make sure we do that right. Uh, and then beyond that, right, compaction methods, support for Azure, uh, more metadata query support. So you can see like, oh, where exactly are these files? What are the paths? Support partitioning and sorting tables currently we can read sorted and partition tables, but inserting into sorted and partition tables, not yet. But that is something that we also plan. And then uh, writing without an IRC connection. So just dumping stuff directly into a directory, and then you can really play around with the files. And that is, uh, yeah, that's kind of the whole talk. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hands. I think I raced through that. That was a world record for me. Yes. Um, as someone working on uh, Duck Meeting Iceberg, how do you feel about Duck Lake? Do you think uh, they're complimentary meeting? I think they're pretty complimentary. Um, I think, like, Duck Lake was also built a lot with Iceberg in mind, and this, the two implementations feed off of each other a lot. Like, I am taking a lot of ideas that are in Duck Lake and putting them in Iceberg, and then also I notice things that are wrong in Duck Lake, and then I fix them over there. Uh, I think they complement each other quite a bit, and there's like a lot of synergy between the two. And again, like we are very committed to implementing the full Iceberg spec. I want to make that very clear. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Uh, the yeah. Yeah. So that's also something that we want to focus on. Yeah, we want to work on a metadata cache. The problem with that is, right, if other people start updating it, you still have to go get all of that information. So if you list all the tables, right, there is a possible case where somebody adds a column to every single table, and then you need to go fetch that again from every single URL. Um, that's sorry. Yeah, every endpoint for the get table, get table information endpoint. You cache the data as well, like row group. Yes, we have an external. That's a good point. We have an external like uh, file cache or internal. That so once you start reading the data, it sits locally, and then. If you read again from the same table and the pointer hasn't updated, so all of the manifest files and manifest lists are the same, we will read that from our internal cache. Is that like a generic thing that you share with also your Delta plugin or Parquet yeah. plugin, or do you have to implement it just for Iceberg and just for Delta, just for Parquet? That is, I think, so it's definitely in our Parquet reader. I think you could, uh, it's in core, the feature that we store it. So I think it's for like all files, um, but it, there's like certain use cases around like if your file is already local, we don't do it. If it's already on your laptop, we don't do it, but like we can determine where the file is and if we should store it or not. And then there is like limits around, okay, how much memory do you have? What are we going to evict? What are we not going to evict? Wonderful talk. Um, all right, thank you very much. It was is that true, no? I'm super excited about the one. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say we we got all our five talks. Uh, well, I, I just want to say thank you for everyone who got today here. Yeah.